In this lab, we'll configure NAT from scratch on a Linux machine using NAT filter and IP tables. This is our topology. This is my Windows recording computer that's connected to the NAT router using an Ethernet connection through a layer 2 switch. The NAT router runs Ubuntu and is connected directly to the Internet using a wireless connection. The name of its external interface is WL01 and the name of its internal or LAN interface is ENP8S0. You can see the names of the Linux interfaces by running ifconfig command. Yes, I know, these names are difficult to remember, but we don't give them too much importance and take them as they are. The LAN network address is 10.0.0.0 slash 24. The Windows PC has 10.0.0.2 and the Linux router has 10.0.0.1 on the internal interface. The public IP address, which is the IP address of its external interface, is dynamic and it's not important to us. On Windows, on the Ethernet interface, I'll set a static IP. 10.0.0.2 The subnet mask will be 255, 255, 255 and 0, it means slash 24 and the default gateway will be the IP address of the net router 10.0.0.1 and the DNS server will be the public DNS server from Google. Perfect. Let's get started with the NAT configuration. I'm gonna connect using SSH and PuTTY to the Linux NAT router. There is another wireless connection between Windows and Linux router connection that will be disabled at the end. I'm using it only for this configuration. This is the NAT router and I've become root. All IP tables commands should be run by root only. The first step is to enable the routing process on the Linux NAT router. Echo 1, the output redirection, slash proc, sys, net, ipv4, slash ip underline forward. Now the Linux machine is a router. The second and the last step is to create an IP tables rule that matches traffic that will be netted. Keep in mind that we should always use the NAT table and the post routing chain and the target will be SNET or Masquerade. We use SNET when we know the public IP address of the router, that's a static address, and Masquerade when the public IP address is dynamic and it changes frequently, that's a dynamic IP address. IP tables minus t net minus a post routing minus s the entire subnet 10.0.0.0 slash 24 minus o the outgoing interface the external interface of the router w l o 1 minus j masquerade By the way, it's not mandatory that all LAN traffic, like in this example, to be netted. It's possible, for example, to net only DNS, email, HTTP, and HTTPS traffic. We use the required matches. Okay, that's all. Let's check if it's working. On the Windows machine, I'm going to disable the wireless interface. I should be able to access the internet using the ethernet connection and the net router I've just configured. So, disable. 
Good, it's disabled. I'm opening the command prompt cmd.exe and then test the layer 3 connection to an external IP address like for example 8.8.4.4. By the way, this is another public DNS server from Google. And it's working. The packets have reached the Linux router which has translated the source IP address with the IP address of its external interface and sent them to the destination on the internet. I'm opening a new connection to the NAT router and then I list the NAT table. By the way, the first SSH connection froze. So 10.0.0.1 and here I have a custom port 2299. And it's working. I'm authenticating. And I'm becoming root. IP tables minus Tnet minus VNL. We notice that 31 packets have been matched and translated by the rule. Also keep in mind that the configuration is not saved after the system is restarted. If you want to activate NAT at boot time, you should write the configuration inside the script and set the script to execute it at boot time automatically. 